Hello everyone, and welcome back to another CryEngine 5.7 LTS video tutorial. In our part 1 video, we created our character from scratch, and we applied WASD movement as well as the ability to use the mouse to look around. And in this part 2 video, we're going to be adding some sprinting to our character. Currently, our character only has one movement speed, and by adding sprinting, we'll have two movement speeds. We'll have one for walking and one for sprinting. Just like our last video, we'll be using Visual Studio for our C++ and of course CryEngine 5.7 LTS to test it all out. If you haven't watched the first part of this series, I recommend it to get caught up. Our playable character and the CPP that goes with it that we're going to be modifying today is all covered in our first part 1 tutorial where we built it. Now to get started, we're going to be opening up our game solution in our CryEngine Projects main directory. And we'll go down to game.sln or game solution and we'll open that up. And once this is open, you'll see that our CPP and our .h are exactly like they were when we left off from part one. So this is all looking familiar. We haven't touched anything. The first thing we're going to do before we do anything with our sprinting is we're going to clean this up just a little bit because as we add more and more to our player, well, it can get kind of messy, so we want to think ahead. It's a good practice to do it when you're programming. The first thing that we are going to do to start cleaning this up is something called forward declaration. And how this is done is we copy all of the includes in our player.h, and we'll paste them under the includes in the player.cpp. So I'm going to separate them from the existing includes just to make it a bit more clear um, which ones are which. Now, while for declaration will help you with large projects and save you some compile times, it is by no means required. It's just a little bit of an optimization trick, so it's unrelated to CryEngine, and, and it's purely just a C++ thing, but, you know, all the cool kids do it. Since the header file references certain classes from the includes, well, now the CPP, the header will have undefined names. We use for declare to tell the compiler Hey, don't worry about these names. We'll see the definition for them later on if we need it. Um, yeah, I, I won't do that again. Now, if we tried to build this as is, we would get an error because it wouldn't know the camera component. It wouldn't know the input component. It wouldn't know that those are classes. So like my stepmom, there's no class here, um, and we need to define that. It's going to look like this. So it's going to be namespace, cry, default components. And then we're going to want to do some curly braces. And we're going to hit enter. And we're going to put our class inside of these curly braces down below. So we're going to go ahead and put all of our components here where this class C camera component is. So we're going to go ahead and add the other components here. So we have our class C camera component. Um, I'm going to hit control C, copy that, and just make four. So now we have one. And I'm just going to replace these with each of the components that we're trying to put inside of this namespace. So we have our input, we have our C character component, and then of course at the very end we have our class C advanced animation component. And that's it for our forward declaration. Go ahead and hit control shift S to save all of the progress. And we've just now optimized our project just a little bit. Next we're going to go ahead and start working on our player state. So underneath all of our new namespace cry default components that we've just added, we're going to hit enter we're going to start with enum, and then we'll type out class, and then we're going to give this a name. We're going to give this enum the name player state, so we're going to do capital E, player state, and that E in the beginning is, of course, designating the convention that it is, in fact, an elephant. Now, that's just because it's the naming conventions of CryEngine, so as you know, our member variables start with M, and our pointers start with P, so our enums, of course, we want to start with an E. And actually, the enum is, it stands for enumeration. So the class isn't necessary, but it's good practice. So we don't pollute the scope here. And polluting is bad. So to save the sea turtles, we're going to optimize this scope by using this enum. We'll end this one with some curly braces and we're going to hit enter. And within these curly braces, we're going to do walking. Uh, make sure it's capital W and we'll do a comma and we'll do sprinting. With our player state set up, now we want to create a variable for this enum class. So we're going to go to the bottom, go down here, and we're going to do e player state, 
And next we'll create the member variable. So we'll do m underscore current, uh, current player state. We also want to make member variables for our movement. So these are going to be floats. I'm going to go and put these underneath our member variables for rotation speed, um, just so we can have all of our player movement in the same area here in our private class. So I'm going to name this float m underscore walk speed, and then close that off. And underneath that, I'll do float m underscore run speed. And that's it for our member variables. Now we have one for walking, one for running. And we now want to make a add member line for each of these so that we can modify the values right within CryEngine. So I'm going to go up here to the add member line. And we're just going to replace the content of this m movement speed add member because we are still going to be using this member variable, but we're not going to be modifying it anymore because, well, now we're going to be modifying our sprint speed and our walk speed. We'll change the ID to PWS for player walk speed, of course, and then for the rest of these, self-explanatory, so player walk speed, player walk speed, and then of course, sets the player's walk speed as the description. Underneath our walk speed, we'll have m run speed, and then we'll change our ID to PRS. We'll change the rest of these, so player run speed, player run speed, and sets the player run speed. However, you may have caught this. If we build this as is, it would build just fine, but we could walk around just fine. The player would be able to load into the level. Um, everything would be dandy. However, we would not be able to use the mouse at all. Like We, we wouldn't be able to use mouse rotation. Um, and this is due to the ID of the run speed and the rotation speed being the same here in this add member line. So PRS and PRS. And what this is doing and why the mouse wouldn't actually work is that Due to these having the same IDs, the second one would be overwritten by whatever line is above it with the same ID. So the run speed would be able to work if you know we once we put the code in. However, it would cancel out any any rotation speed at all. It wouldn't even start that line. We wouldn't be able to set the value uh, in the properties of our player entity. So we're gonna update this. We're gonna add uh, one more letter to the ID of our rotation speed because. We can do anywhere from three to four letters. So I'm going to do PROS, so player rotation speed. And this is the one trick your doctor doesn't want you knowing about. So you can use one to four characters in here within these single quotes, uh, or you can also use a single number without the quotes. But it has to be between one and four, and that's because the syntax is a multi character literal, or it's called a character literal if you put only a single character. The letters, will be converted to a decimal number and there'll be a type of integer and that's why you cannot put five letters because five letters well that would be larger than an integer so one to four is the rule here within these single quotes we can now move on to adding the inputs into our cpp so in our player cpp we go down to the inputs and we're going to copy and paste one of the existing register action and bind action lines and start replacing it with our sprinting so underneath our move left I'm going to do sprint, so player sprint. The activation mode is all going to be the same. Uh, I'm going to name the player sprint, and for the keyboard and mouse, EKI, I'm going to do left shift, which is L shift as an EKI, so I'll do L shift. So to get our player to actually sprint underneath our activation mode between the curly braces, we're going to do an if statement. So we'll do if, add in some parentheses, and then we'll do within the parentheses, we're going to type out activation mode equals equals. So essentially, is our activation mode the same as EAAM on press? A E for enum, followed by an uppercase A for action. And we'll end it with a capital A and a capital N for activation mode. You'll see a drop down menu, and this is giving us some options here. So we're going to do on press. Underneath, we're going to do some curly braces, and we will want to set our player state to sprinting. To do that, you take our m current player state, and this is going to be equal to e player state colon colon sprinting. And we'll put a semicolon at the end. 
And after this if statement, we're going to do an else if statement. You might be able to see where this is going. Uh, the if we're sprinting and else if, or if we're not, we're going to be walking. So to do this, we're going to do our else if activation mode equal equal E A A M on release. If we're pressing, it will sprint and on release, well, we want to walk. So we're going to do M underscore current player state equals E player state colon colon walking. So if we're holding our sprint key, we are sprinting. And if we're not holding it and when we release it, you can call me Christopher because we will be walking. Oh my God. Now we don't need to because this project is pretty simple, but another good habit to get into is to cast. And we're going to cast here. Uh, we're not going to be casting a spell. We're going to be casting an integer or we're going to be putting an integer right here in front of our EAAM on press. Now we don't need to do this as I mentioned. However, if you have a higher warning level compiler option on uh, and the possible errors it might be looking for during compilation, this could prevent a build technically. So we just want to put an integer right in front of here. And next we're going to scroll down to where we're doing our movement logic. And I'm just going to hit enter under our velocity normalize to create a new line. We need to set the move speed based on the player's current player state. To do that, we're going to do a float and we're going to type out player move speed. So that's going to equal. So we'll type out M current player state equals equals. We will put a player state colon colon. And this is coming off as an if because it's ternary. So uh, sprinting. And then so what a ternary operator allows us to do is to basically insert an if statement inside of this line. So it's basically condensing a bunch of lines into one. So how do we ask it? What are we, well, what are we trying to ask? Without the if, we're saying, does m current player state equal this? So we'll type out m current player state equals equals. And then we're going to ask it if it equals sprinting. And we only want to modify this when we're sprinting. And that's the if statement. It's either going to return true or false. But we actually want to return a float. So how do we do that? Well, we'll put the question mark. We'll put a space, rather, and then a question mark after sprinting. And now we're asking this question, this if, and we're telling it what to return based off what the answer is. So if it's true, the first thing that we'll put is what's returned. If it's false, the next thing will be returned. So the first thing is if it is sprinting, we want our player move speed to equal our sprint speed. So we'll type in M underscore run speed. Then we'll do a semicolon, which is the breakaway point for this. And then we'll do M walk speed. So that's a whole lot. But this essentially boils down to the question that is being asked is if M current player state equals sprinting, then player move speed equals run speed. Otherwise, if it doesn't equal sprinting or running or anything else, it will be walking. Finally, we want to replace this M movement speed at the end of the last line here with our new player move speed. So we'll just change that to player move speed and we'll build this out. And there's no error, so wonderful. And now we can launch CryEngine 5.7 LTS and give this a test. So here's the level. Here's our player that we built in our first tutorial. And if we scroll down to our properties in a C player component, you can see now we have our player run speed and our player walk speed, and we can define these variables. So I'm just going to kind of set them to ridiculous settings. So one for walk speed and 15 for run speed. So I can just show you how crazy it is, but that it works. So really slow walking. Um, slow walk on the beach and then fucking yeet, yeet. So yeah, I definitely can zoom around. Um, that's working. Our sprint and our walking are working independently. Um, more realistic settings. I'm going to go with three for the walk speed and double that uh, with six for the run. And let's just test that out. And it should be a bit more believable. Uh, let's see. We got walking at a nice pace, nice brisk pace and our sprinting. So uh, definitely faster than I can run, but, um, you know, it's all about becoming your best self in these games. 
Now, that's working, and I'm going to propose another issue. I'm going to knock this log over with our new character, thanks to our physics component, and I want to check out what's on that island. It's a mysterious, smoky island. Looks like there's a table over there. But the problem is, is that I can't swim, my player doesn't want to swim, and I can't jump. So, in the next tutorial, we are going to cover jumping, and we will check out what's on that island once we add it. So thanks again, and see you next time.